Hi there, and welcome back to the Ingrain Workshop. I'm Brick. I want to take a moment and thank all the new subscribers to the channel. Your support and comments are greatly appreciated. And if you're new to the channel and you like DIY shop projects, then hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. In today's video, we're going to be trimming out the electrical in the ceiling. We're also going to be showing you how to install a three-way switch, and I'm going to be replacing all my old fluorescent lights with new LED lights. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do since we're installing all the electrical in uh, conduit, metal conduit, I need to take and spray paint everything just flat black so it'll match the workshop. I'm going to go to my first outlet and install an electrical box. I'm going to take this three quarter inch knockout and just uh, remove it with my clines. This way I can uh, feed the four pieces of Romex through it and install it to the ceiling of the workshop. Like I said, this is my first outlet. So I've got uh, four pieces of Romex. One of the Romexes um, is the actual hot feed coming from the uh, the light switch on the wall and then the other three uh, pieces of Romex go to feed uh, three other outlets. So I'm just going to take and mount this uh, outlet box to the ceiling and then I'll be able to start the wiring process. So part of my previous uh, branch circuit video when I installed the branch circuit conductors I made sure that I labeled each Romex so I knew uh, what Romex went where because it can get real confusing. Um, this one here that I'm pointing at, this is the hot leg um, and this is actually coming from the switch. So I'm, I'm just going to move that to the side uh, because I'm not going to need to work on that one right now. And I'm going to take the other three pieces of Romex. Um, one of them goes to an outlet to the right, one to the left and then one feeds the next row of outlets. So I'm just going to take a uh, razor knife here and just score the insulation. You notice I score it just at the bottom and then I rip the insulation back. Uh, that way I don't risk cutting into the insulation and exposing any conductors. Um, and then once I got get the, uh, the insulation off the Romex, then I can go back with my clines and then just rip the individual insulation off the uh, individual conductors. And uh, since your copper wire is already bare, you only have to do this for your black hot leg and then your uh, neutral. So the reason why I'm working on these three pieces of Romex is because these are all going to be spliced together um, and then I'm going to come off the splices with a pigtail and uh, that one pigtail will be the only thing that gets wired uh, to the outlet, uh, which is why the hot leg, I kind of just moved that to the side so I could work on these three pieces of Romex. Um, and then once I get uh, the uh, conductors, uh, the insulation strip back, I can take a, a small piece of Romex, take out the individual conductors, and these will be my pig, pigtails. And you'll see here, I'm just uh, tying all the ground uh, conductors together along with the pigtail. And as soon as I get them all twisted together, I'll uh, put a wire nut on them. And then uh, they'll all be joined together except for the one pigtail, which again, I'll, I'll use that to wire to the outlet. So now with the uh, wire nut on, I can uh, pull back my uh, pigtail, which is right there, and uh, the ground is done. So now I'm going to repeat the same process for the hot, which is the uh, black conductors, and then I'll do the same thing for the uh, neutral, the white conductors. Again, I'll just take my clines, twist all the hot legs uh, together, and then I'll uh, tie in the uh, pigtail and put a wire nut on it and then the, uh, the hot wire be done and then I'll do the same thing with the ground. And 
and now the uh, hot legs are tied in and there's the uh, pigtail for both the uh, ground and the hot leg and then I'm just going to repeat the process for the neutral. Okay, so now we're done with all the pigtails. There's the hot, the ground, and the neutral pigtail. Um, they're all ready to go. So now I'm going to start bending the, uh, the bare conductors over um, in the way in which they're going to be uh, attached to the uh, outlet. You can see I've bent the neutral counter, uh, clockwise because that's the direction the set screw is going to turn. That way you actually tighten the conductor onto the outlet as you're screwing down the set screw. You also notice too on this side of the outlet the set screws are silver. Uh, the, all the neutrals get tied to the silver set screws and then the gold set screws are used for your hot wire. So you can see here the silver set screws and I'm just tying in the neutrals to those set screws. I'm now going to install the last neutral, which is the neutral from the pigtail. So you can see on this side of the outlet, both my neutrals are now installed. Uh, the neutral from the hot leg that's coming into the box from the, the three-way light switch and then the uh, the pigtail neutral and now I'm also uh, tying in the ground and again they're all installed the same way uh, with your loop clockwise so you're tightening them down as you're setting the set screw and now we're going to do the same thing on the hot side of the outlet uh, we're going to tie in the uh, hot leg from the switch and then we'll tie in the hot leg from the pigtail With the outlet connected, now I'm going to take and slide all the excess wiring back up into the ceiling and that'll give me enough room to put the, uh, the smaller excess wiring into the actual box itself along with the outlet and finish the wiring process. With all the wiring tucked away, I can now fasten the actual outlet itself to the outlet box. And there are only two screws for this, one at the top of the outlet and the other is at the bottom. And again, uh, you're just screwing it to the outlet box itself. And then one last thing will be to come back and put on the outlet cover and then that finishes up the entire uh, receptacle. And that's it. Um, the outlet cover's on, the receptacle's done. Now I just need to repeat this process 12 times. Now I'm going to start feeding the Romex for the switch by the front door uh, through the metal conduit. Um, I went ahead and spray painted the conduit. Also made a couple of offset bins in it as well, just to get over the obstructions. And uh, it, you know, it turned out great. Once I got it plumbed up, I fastened it to the wall and uh, then started to install the uh, switch box on the side of the wall. Okay, so let's get ready and wire a three-way switch. Um, you know, a lot of people make this more complicated than it really is. Um, and when you break it down, it's, it's not that difficult to do. You'll notice coming into this uh, switch box, I have two pieces of Romex. One is a two wire and a ground, 
and one is a three wire and a ground. The two wire and a ground Romex is coming from my hot source. In my case, the hot source is the actual electrical panel and the breaker in the panel. So it, it runs from the breaker all the way over to this switch. And then the other piece of Romex in this switch box is a three wire and a ground. And all this simply does is run from one switch to the other switch. There's nothing in this switch box that runs uh, to my outlet or to my light fixtures. It's, it simply runs from this being the first switch over to the second switch. And that's it for this switch box. Okay, so here I'm just preparing the conductors uh, for their connection to the switch. I'm just, uh, you know, taking off the insulation probably about a half inch back um, and just stripping the insulation off the individual conductors. You'll notice that I started with the four or the three wire and a ground. That's the Romex I started with. And now I'm going to go to the uh, two wire and a ground Romex, which is the hot leg coming from the uh, electrical panel. Also keep in mind too that the three wire and a ground, the Romex that runs between the two switches, I think most electricians refer to those as travelers and that's basically all they're doing. It's just a way for the two switches to be able to communicate back and forth as far as which switch is on and which switch is off. I'm going to start with the hot wire uh, coming from the hot leg Romex which is coming from the electrical panel. Um, now that I've got the uh, insulation stripped back, I'm going to take and just uh, bend it um, clockwise so I can set it on the set screw and then tighten it down to the set screw. And keep in mind too that uh, this is a little different than the outlet. The black screw at the bottom is where your, uh, your hot comes into the switch. So you always want to make sure you take your hot leg and tie it to that black screw. And then you'll see two screws at the top of the switch. And those are the two screws that the travelers get connected to. And that would be the black wire and the red wire from the other Romex, which basically just runs between switch one and switch two. So here again, I'm going to take and just bend the, uh, the black on the uh, traveler and put it on the, uh, the top of the uh, outlet. And you notice I keep the black wires on the same side of the switch. So you've got the hot down at the bottom of the switch and then the black traveler at the top of the switch. And then I'll turn the switch around and connect the red traveler to the top set screw on the other side of the switch. And you'll see on the other side of the switch, you only have one set screw for the red wire, and then you have the ground. So unlike on wiring the outlet, what we're going to do is, once I get the red traveler tied into this set screw, I'm going to go then and tie in the two grounds, and then hook the grounds up to the switch. And then as far as the neutrals go, all I'm going to do is twist the two neutrals together and put a wire nut on them. They do not connect at all to the switch. They're simply twisted together and connected with a wire nut. Also the two set screws at the top of the switch is what makes it different than just a regular single pole switch. If this were just a single pole switch you'd only have one set screw um, on the same side as your hot set screw. There would be no set screws on the opposite side of the switch. Uh, that's just your typical single pole switch. But because this is a three-way switch, you have two set screws at the top, then your one hot set screw at the bottom, and then along uh, your ground. And so here you can see that I'm twisting the, uh, the neutrals together, and then I'll just uh, put a wire nut on it, and that will conclude the wiring of this three-way switch. Now I've got the uh, ground twisted together. I can tie it into the uh, switch and you can see on that side the switch and the red traveler and the black uh, hot and the black traveler 
at the top and that pretty much winds up the uh, the wiring of the switch I just gotta put this wire nut on the neutral to tie in the two neutrals and that's it you might have noticed that cat 5 or cat 6 cabling in the same box um, for right now I just cold it up and put it in the box but eventually this is going to be where my workstation is going to be where I'm going to have my laptop and computer so I'll probably at a later date uh, take that cat 5 and uh, tie it into my router um, so I'll have Wi-Fi throughout the workshop but that would be a project for a later date. So this was my first time working with metal conduit and metal boxes and this switch does not fit in this box you can see the four tabs that I'm breaking off with my clines. Um, they're already perforated, so they do just snap off, and I'm assuming that's why they're they're made like this. So once I snap the four tabs off, um, unlike a traditional box where you have uh, two screws to screw the switch in, um, on this type of metal box there are no screws. The actual cover plate is what holds the switch in place so what you have to do is you have to screw the switch into the cover plate and then screw the cover plate to the box itself and that's how it all fastens together so it's a little different than a PVC box or just a regular Romex box that is traditionally in a framed wall um, but again it wasn't uh, that hard to modify it um, to work and you'll see here now I'm just going to take the uh, the cover the switch cover and screw that to the actual outlet itself and then I'll uh, once I get that done then I can take and screw the actual cover itself to the outlet box you can see here how the uh, out uh, the switch is actually screwed now onto the cover and then I'm just going to take the cover and screw it to the actual box itself uh, you know again um, you know, I'm not uh, familiar with working with uh, metal conduit and metal boxes, but it was all, you know, pretty easy. Um, you know, you did have to kind of make some adjustments on the fly, but uh, nothing too major, nothing I couldn't handle. Um, but you can see after I bent off the, uh, the four corners of the switch, it fit perfect uh, to the cover, and you've got the two screws that hold the switch to the cover and then the two screws that hold the cover to the box and that's pretty much it we're done with the uh, with the three-way switch the first three-way switch now we got to go do the second three-way switch here's the uh, finished product uh, the switch by the front door you can see the switch is completely trimmed out um, I think the painting it black I think makes it look a lot nicer for the workshop and then you can see just the uh, the half inch straps and then the offset over the top piece of trim and then the four point saddle I had to make over the uh, horizontal trim um, but all in all for for my first time uh, working with metal conduit metal boxes I think I did a good job before I install the second switch at the rear door I've got to uh, bend some conduit for that switch location so what I'm doing here is I'm marking two inches from the end of the conduit and then four and a half inches from that mark uh, and what those two marks represent are my bending marks um, I, I'm going to go to my, my, my first mark and bend it I think I'm bending a 30 degree angle here and then once I get that angle bent I will take the uh, the conduit slide it down and then rotate it 180 degrees which is what I'm doing here um, and then I'm gonna take put it on the second mark but before I bend the second bend I just want to look down the conduit and make sure there's not a dog leg uh, in my bend. I want to make sure that I've rotated the conduit exactly 180 degrees that way my bends will be in line with each other and there won't be a dog leg in the bend and this will get me by the uh, the first obstruction which is the top piece of trim on the where the wall meets the uh, ceiling so now that I've got it all lined up I'm making the uh, the second bend which is a 30 degree bend 
and then that will complete the offset and you can see when I pulled out of the bender what the offset looks like and that's what I was looking for. I've got the conduit bent to where I want it so now I'm just going to do a test fit. I hold it up against the wall where it's going to go and it looks like it fits perfect. I'm also going to use a pencil and mark on the conduit where I'm going to need to cut it off. Then I'm going to take a uh, Zolzol and cut it to length and then I'll just take my clines and clean out the burr just to make sure there are no metal burrs that might uh, cut the, uh, the Romex wiring. I took the conduit outside, painted it black, and now I'm ready to just start feeding the Romex through the uh, conduit and get the conduit mounted. Once I got the uh, conduit mounted to the wall, I just started to uh, install the, the metal box. And the box has a, uh, a half inch uh, slip fitting on top of it that slips over the, uh, the conduit. And then there's just a single set screw in that slip fitting that fastens the actual box uh, to the conduit. And inside the, the con or inside the box, there's an actual uh, lock washer or lock nut uh, that you tighten down to fasten that to the box. And then once I get that uh, installed, I go ahead and put one more you know fastener to the conduit just to secure it. And then I can uh, install the box to the uh, wall itself. With the box installed on the wall, you can now see that there's two Romex wires in this switch box. So similar to the first switch, um, which also had two uh, pieces of Romex, this, this box also has two. Uh, the, uh, the Romex that I'm peeling back the installation on right now is the, uh, the hot that's going to be leaving this switch box. So this this Romex goes from the switch to the outlets in the ceiling or to a light fixture if you're wiring it directly to a light fixture. So um, there's nothing else that, that comes into this box um, as far as from the electrical panel. And then the other Romex is again the uh, three wire and a ground Romex which contains your two travelers that I mentioned earlier when we wired up the first switch. So this Romex strictly runs from the first switch to the second switch and all it's used for is so the two switches can communicate back and forth which switch is on, which switch is off and then instead of having a hot coming into this box we have a hot going out and it goes to the outlets in, in this instance or it could go out and feed a light fixture. So now I'm just going to trim up uh, trim off the excess conductors and get to wiring this switch what will which will be wired the same way the same identical way as we wired the first switch The switch at the back door is now complete. Uh, you know, the, the wiring of the switch, the conduit, all the bending, the offsets, it all looks fine. Uh, looks great actually. Uh, like I said, this is my first time working with a metal conduit. It turned out great. Okay, so uh, I think we're now, it's time for the big reveal here. Uh, we're going to try them out uh, and see how they, how they work and, you know. Like the big man said, let there be light, and I hope that there is light. <laughs> I'm sure it will work. Let's find out. Let there be light.
And as you can see, I mean, the LED lights turned out great. Um, the number of lights I've got in the ceiling, I think, are plenty. Um, there are two more light fixtures that uh, I'm going to need to install along the back wall. But for the most part, uh, the ceiling is complete. Um, you know, we've completed all the electrical trim out, uh, trimmed out all the outlet boxes, installed the LED lights. They just plug in. Um, and then we wired up the three-way switch. Uh, so everything now is complete as far as the ceiling goes. The only other things I need to do to the ceiling is install two retractable uh, hose reels for air hoses and then one retractable electrical reel uh, for an electrical cord. But other than that, uh, the ceiling work is 100% complete and we can start trimming out the, uh, the walls. But as far as the ceiling goes, I think we're done and we can call it a wrap for this one. Well, that's going to wrap up this video on trimming out the electrical and the workshop ceiling, along with showing you how to install a three-way switch and installing new LED lights throughout the workshop. Now, all the tools and the equipment used in this project, I'll link up in the description below. I hope this video helps you in your project. I hope it gives you some ideas. Now, get out there and create, build, and inspire, and as always, pay it forward. If you're new to the channel, and you like DIY projects and shop projects, then hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. I'm Rick and this is the Ingrain Workshop, signing out. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.